Hi, this is Matt from tracymat.co.uk and from boxings.com. And here I have the Sony Ericsson Aino, uh, which is, uh, I think, a slightly unfortunate name, even if I am saying it right or wrong. Uh, I say that's Aino. Anyway, uh, moving on, uh, we've got an unboxing of the uh, Sony Ericsson handset for you, and uh, we're just going to check that out now. So, inside the box, uh, which sadly looks like it's already been a bit uh, torn and battered. We have the handset itself. I'm going to look at it in a bit more detail in just a second. I want to show you what else is in the box. So on top we have a little media control unit, uh, which I believe is Bluetooth. Uh, it has a little charge socket on the bottom and a power switch uh, and a power button, and uh, a little phone button. We can plug in standard three and a half mil headphones, and uh, then we have media controls on the side, play, pause, and skip tracks and uh, a volume control on the other side which uh, looks like it's actually uh, touch sensitive rather than push button but that's uh, kind of interesting look at that in a bit more detail uh, when we come to the full review so we can get that charged up and tested out uh, underneath we have a charger which is a fairly standard Sony Ericsson style charger uh, common uh, in that uh, it's uh, common to Sony Ericsson uh, but proprietary to them uh, we then have a little throughout bag that the battery was in and we have a piece of foam. We have this small dock uh, which is quite a, a nice idea and neat uh, affair. And we can plug in the charger one side and we can plug in a USB sync charge style cable the other side. Um, both in at the same time, quite cool. The idea here is that we can place the Bluetooth control headset on one side and then we can place the handset on the other side to charge them both up and obviously to present them there like that. Also we could actually um, have that playing uh, video or music back actually in the cradle itself. So that's quite neat and a nice idea. I do like handsets that have um, sort of a bit more of an unusual uh, approach so that's uh, quite good and it's nice to actually have the little docking station. Also in the box we have a USB sync and charge cable, let's just open up. And that is a standard USB on one end and then that proprietary Sony Ericsson style connector on the other and uh, that does plug into the dock. We then have a set of headphones. look at and they come with uh, different size ear buds so that we can depending on the size of your ears you can change those then we have the headphones themselves which have a standard three and a half mil jack on that one end so you will be able to use your own headphones if you wish um, and then we have a short length of cable and obviously the headphones themselves these are pretty good headphones. We've used these on some of the other handsets that Sony Ericsson uh, produce, and uh, they are among the best headphones supplied with uh, a handset like that, so uh, they are pretty cool. Finally, we do have uh, the instruction manual, or user guide, which uh, kind of typical of Sony Ericsson is like a large pull-out leaflet rather than a booklet. Then we have some important information in a small booklet. FCC statement uh, about some details about the movies available on play now and uh, then the SAR information. That's all there. So let's move that out of the way and we'll have a look at the uh, handset itself in more detail and we'll just peel off this screen protector at the front. So first of all we have a 3 inch display which is actually 240 by 432 pixels. Now if that specification that I'm reading is actually correct that's kind of an unusual resolution, not one that I've come across before. 432 pixels is a little bit strange. Um, and it is, uh, according to spec, a 16 million color display, sort of a true color TFT, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, looking around the handset, we have the sync and charge socket on one side. And on the bottom, we have a loudspeaker, grill, and an eyelet where we could put in a phone charm or a lanyard. Dedicated camera button on the right hand side and on the top we have an up down volume control rocker. Then there is a power button on top of the handset itself. On the back we have an 8.1 megapixel camera, which we'll just peel off there. An 8.1 megapixel camera 
which is autofocus and also has a flash which is quite cool. Um, for, unfortunately there isn't a mirror for taking self-portraits, not something that bothered me but I know some people like being able to take pictures of themselves, um, don't know why. And uh, then if we move around to the front of the handset again we can actually slide open and this mechanism is quite fluid. It is obviously spring loaded and quite cool and that just pops open like so. Then we have the controls underneath, so we have phone keys and then we have a menu button and a soft keys, D-pad up, down, uh, left and right and then there is a push button in the centre there. And then obviously the numeric keypad for dialing in numbers and texting and so on. Now the keys are quite flat and uh, they are quite positive, they have a nice positive click to them when you press them. Uh, so they are quite flat obviously but because that needs to slide underneath the mechanism there like so. Um, but that's quite cool. In terms of the rest of the specification we have as I say that 8.1 megapixel camera which is good. Uh, which has a 16 times digital zoom and flash. Battery talk time is actually listed at 13 hours, which would be quite exceptional, and standby time up to 380 hours, which is quite good. Dimensions 104 millimeters from top to bottom, 50 mil wide, and 15.5 uh, millimeters thick. Weight 134 grams, doesn't feel too heavy in the hand. Not a bad looking handset, it's fairly kind, kind of generic looking, but not bad. Does have built in GPS, which is good. And we do have a micro SD card slot, which I assume will be somewhere underneath this uh, back cover, which we'll attempt to remove. And the back cover does pop off like so. That's a kind of uh, rigid back cover there. That's uh, kind of strange for that to be so, so tough to remove. But uh, then we do have a memory card, which is a... 8 gig micro SD HC memory card that pops in the slot on the side. Don't have to take the battery out to change the memory card, which is cool. Do have to take the battery out to get to the SIM card, but that's standard and desirable because uh, you shouldn't do that when the handset's powered up. Uh, that all pops back on like so. And as I say, that is quite actually a tough back to uh, get on and off, but uh, there we go, that's back on like so. We do also have Bluetooth. Two with EDR and A2DP support, obviously because we need that because of the little debris that comes with it, which is quite cool. Built-in Wi-Fi, ATA211 BNG, Google Maps pre-installed. It can operate as a modem. Uh, we do have PicBridge synchronization, USB mass storage mode, and USB connectivity. So obviously you can uh, transfer your data and uh, your photos and your video and everything to and from your uh, handset via your PC or your Mac, which is quite cool. Um, quad band for GSM, so it will work pretty much wherever you take it throughout the world and dual band for HSDPA and 3G, again quite good. Finally the built in memory is only 55 meg but that's not really too much of a problem because you do get that 8 gig micro SD card supplied. Um, we'll take a look at the OS in uh, obviously some detail when we actually come to do the full review and uh, we will actually talk about how that works and uh, what we think of uh, the operating system and the, the device uh, in itself as a concept with you know all the bits that you get with it including the dock and uh, the little media or uh, headphone adapter there that's uh, also quite cool. We'll have a full review on tracymac.co.uk over the next week or so and if you're a fan of our unboxing videos check out the others that we have on unboxings.com.